Welcome to Connection with Brian and Nicole Wright. Welcome. Hello. 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 So good to see you. <laughs> Welcome back to Connection with Brian and Nicole. Go ahead. You're up. <laughs> In my head, I'm going, and I'm Brian, and I'm Nicole. Then he said, go ahead, and I'm like, but I'm not Brian. <laughs> That's Brian. I'm Nicole. We're glad you're here. Nice to meet you. Yeah, pleasure. <laughs> you can connect with us anytime at connectionshow.org, and we're going today um, carrying on with Hope Part 4, but there are an awesome first three parts that you might want to hear. Yes. So hang out with us today, but then go back, listen to the first three. There's going to be more, too, because... Hope is just an awesome, awesome tool. Yes, amen. We talked about it last time, and all I could see was there's this little boy that used to say, I chop your head off. So when Brian's talking about it being an awesome tool, all I hear is, you know, I chopped your head off with the sword of hope. Amen. So amen. we're going to carry on today with hope because it is such a great, great thing that Satan attacks because he knows that it can set us free. That's right. Hope really is a difference maker, and uh, it really makes a difference in our lives. Uh, that is one of the ways that we really become the salt and the light yeah. in the earth. Uh, we raise the atmosphere to godly standards as we put on hope. But if we don't choose hope, then we fail to be the ambassador that God wants us to be or to be the salt and the light that God wants us to be. And so hope, let's talk about real quickly, just go over it one more time. What is hope? So in the world, generally in our language in America, we say that hope, uh, we'll say, I hope you get to feeling better. And what we mean by that is it could go your way or not, and I hope it falls your way, which basically is it's luck. Well, it may fall your way, it may not. I'm lucking that it will fall your way, okay. which hope in the Bible is the exact opposite of that. It has right. nothing to do with luck. There's a power it, to it. Yes, there is a strength to it. Yeah. It has to do with knowing the character of God, the nature of God, and the promises of God. And when you start to find out who God really is and how much He loves you, then all of a sudden, joy becomes manifest. Uh, confidence. We have this confidence in who God is and how much He loves us. And that produces a confidence inside of us. Yeah. And we have an expectation that God's on the scene and He's going to show up and bring about the triumph, bring about the victory. And joy, confidence, and expectation, that's the biblical definition of hope. And so when we say that there's hope, that means we are saying no matter what you're facing, there's joy. No matter what you're facing, what the report is, there's a confidence to be had. And no matter what you're facing, there is you should be putting on expectation. And if you don't have joy, you don't have confidence, you don't have expectation that's flowing out of you, you're not in hope. As much as you want to say that you might be, as much as a lot of times I know we, we feel like, well, I'm in faith and I'm in hope and and we just really weren't yeah. we really weren't and so as we learned about hope and learned how to employ it and we're still learning that ourselves yeah. as we learn that things started to change in our lives in every area of our life we started receiving healing provision protection from God right. just things you know the glory of the Lord rose in our life as we partnered with God with our hope and uh, today what we're talking about is that as believers, as Christians, as believers in Jesus, we have a responsibility to hope. That's we right. have a responsibility. It's more than just a, uh, well, do this if you want to. It's not just a good idea. It's not just a good idea. Yeah. We have a responsibility to hope. And so we want to take a look at that. And let me give you the three different areas that we're talking about first. So number one, hope, here's our responsibility. Hope is Christ-like. In other words, we are called to be like Christ. Hope is Christ-like. So there's our first responsibility. Be like Jesus. Be Christ-like. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So as we follow Christ, we're going to find out that hope is Christ-like. And if he put on hope, and is hope, then we need to put it on too. Two, hope is a command. He commands us to hope. And then part three is this. Hope is contagious. In other words, when we put on hope, there's something about hope 
that people grab a hold of yeah. and it, it changes their life and they want to be in hope as well. It, it's contagious and yeah. it's a beautiful thing. So hope is Christ-like, hope is a command, and hope is contagious, and we have a responsibility to hope. So let's uh, go ahead and look. Uh, if you want to say anything, let's go ahead and turn to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah, while you're turning, you know, the thing that's just been coming up in me is, you know, the reason that we have a responsibility to hope is because not only is it important for our own lives, but the yes. lives of others yes. depend upon your hope yes. in some manner of speaking. You know, I think about the example that comes to mind for me is we have a daughter who is almost 15 and when she was a baby she had a heart condition that we didn't know about we found out about it and an hour later she was in emergency heart surgery and we went through all of that and people were you know obviously coming to the hospital to see us and visit us and support us and it was just a supernatural hope that we had throughout all of yes. that throughout the surgery when um, she had an issue and she actually flatlined and they, they got her back. But throughout all of it, we had a supernatural hope yes. that not only gave us strength to get through that, but it spoke to the people that were ministering, that came to minister to us. That's right. Our hope in God through this uh, seeming tragedy ministered to them. Yes. And then I truly believe that it was our hope in that situation and our hope in the coming days that got her completely healed. We went back, was it two, three years now, we went back for a checkup and the doctor that was there in the hospital said, I was there. <laughs> I know what her heart looked like. This is not the same heart. Yeah. This is a perfect heart. There's not even a, a sign that she ever had surgery. There's no scar tissue, there's nothing. Yes. So, you know, not only do we minister to people but the life of our daughter, because they had said she was going to have problems in the future. The yeah. life of our daughter changed forever yes. because we had and accepted that responsibility to stand on hope. It didn't make sense. We were, we were men and women of God. We were being yes. attacked. Why was our child being attacked? It didn't make sense. But we knew who our father That's was. Right. We know he's not going to bring a child into the world to take them out. So we stood on hope, we blessed others, and we changed the life of our daughter because of that hope. So you have a hope. Yes. You have a responsibility to accept that hope yes. and to walk in it, no matter what you see, yes. no matter how it feels. And when you do that, yes, you will change your circumstances, but there are people watching you, there are people gleaning from you, and there are people that you are affecting, you have no clue. So that's, that's right. kind of speaking to where the hope is contagious, I guess. Yes. But you have a responsibility and you need to accept that because it is not just you that is that is relying upon your hope in Christ. Yeah. And it, throughout the rest of this series and later uh, episodes, we'll talk about how hope actually works with faith. But without hope, faith has nothing to produce. That's I'll just right. throw that out there. And what we found was that as we took hope in God mm -hmm. and now the faith had something to produce yeah. the testimony came and so not only were was our lives changed our daughter's life was changed but now it produced that hope produced a testimony yes. that that testimony has blessed person after person after person and it has encouraged them it goes back to the contagious part yeah. it has encouraged them to take hope when they didn't feel like there was any hope there. Mm -hmm. and uh, But I, I want to point this on that story. I want to point this out. I want to talk about the relationship between feelings and hope. Yeah. Because we did not feel That's like right. being joyful. We did not feel like being confident. We did not feel like getting expecting anything out of the promises of God. Our feelings of our flesh and of our mind that would come periodically were taking us to the opposite place of hope. Absolutely. And we had to, what the word says is put our flesh down, mm -hmm. submit our flesh, our thoughts, our emotions to what the word said. And when we did that, that's how we got into joy. 
That's how we grabbed a hold of confidence. That's how we had expectation. And then that is what faith produced. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of times people think, well, I'm just... Basically, they live their life as a product of their emotions instead of living their life as a product of what God has said in That's His right. promises and tell their emotions that you need to line up and my, their thoughts. You need to line up with what God says, not me line up with what my emotions and my yeah. thoughts say. Because my, my thoughts and my emotions, they can lie to me because the truth is God's word. Yes. And I can tell you in that situation, my emotions and my thoughts, I know yours as well, oh, yeah. they were lying to us. If God's word is truth, our emotions and our thoughts were lying to us. But as we handed our emotions and our thoughts and submitted our flesh to God, all of a sudden we were able to manifest a truth that was higher than the yeah. physical, like what he said. She'll she'll have problems in the future. We said, nope, no, Absolutely she will not. not. Uh, they, they said, we'll come back and it'll probably do this and this and everything. We said, no, we don't receive that. We yeah. receive the truth of God. We take, we put our hope and our trust in Him, and that hope in Him will not disappoint. And we stood on that, stood That's on that. Right. We went back a couple of times. They didn't have that report. It was good, but it wasn't that report. Right. But then the last one that we had several years ago, they, he said, I was there. I, I could not. I, if I was looking at this, I am a specialist in hearts. And he said, I would not be able to tell that this particular heart ever had surgery done to it and and I went wow praise God that is exactly yeah. what we prayed and we hoped for joyful confident expectation that's what we had joy for confidence in and expectation of the promises of God and that's what happened and but we so, stood we stood on that hope for 11 years yes. she had this surgery when she was three months old yes and I, I believe it was her 12th um, when she was 12 years old when we had 12 or 13 when we had that thing. So like like Pastor Ron said, we went back and we had decent reports, not bad, but not yeah. God's perfection. We're not we're not accepting anything less than God's perfection yes. for our child. So we said thank you very much. And then we walked out the door and said, I praise you, Lord, that, that doctor's while it's a good report, it's not the final report. That's right. We hold on to hope for your final report in yes. our lives. And yes. you know, as as even through the years, as we were holding on to that hope, you know, we had people come and go with just a lack of faith, a lack of hope. It's our responsibility yes. to take that hope and be contagious when others are weak. Yes. You know, like, like you said, we had moments where, you know, we didn't necessarily feel like doing it. How much did it help when we had, you know, a pastor to walk in yes. or a friend to walk in and said, God's word is true. I yes. encourage you to hold on to that hope that you know, that confident expectation that you know God's word is the only final word. Yes. And boy, when someone would walk in <laughs> and do that, we'd write, that's right. Man, it would strengthen Man, us. you're right. Yeah. I'm not holding on to less than God's perfect. And yeah. so this is why we have a responsibility because they may be super Christian. They may be super strong, but every person is a person. They still have flesh to contend with. And when we carry our strength and our faith in God and our hope in God everywhere we go, that hope is contagious and it builds people up and reminds yes. them, I can be joyful in this. I can be confident in this yes. because I expect my father's going to do good, good things. Yes. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, you yeah. take that hope with you. And I, I want to add this on there and then I really want to pray right now for you. Yeah. But I can tell you that I've walked into situations as a pastor before where circumstances looked grim yeah. and they looked very dire and they looked like uh, not good. And matter of fact, I've walked into situations and I kind of knew that this was not going to end well. I just had a sense from the Holy Spirit that it was not going to end the way that people wanted it. and uh, and. You, you face this choice in that situation. Uh, do I stand for hope and the promises of God or do I just uh, let it go? Because what you're going through in that moment, your thoughts are saying is, uh, well, if I believe God for this and then it doesn't happen, then I'm going to have a bad reputation 
and they're going to say, well, look, he believed God and he had no faith. It didn't happen. Or it could turn out good and then you look good, but you don't necessarily know what the people are going to do with your faith. And this is what the Lord led me to. I would rather be known, even if it never worked out for them, let's say that they took faith and hope, and as soon as I walked out the door, they flushed faith and hope down the toilet. I would rather be known as somebody who um, extravagantly mm -hmm. hoped and had faith in the promises of God than somebody who didn't stand for it. Yeah. I'd rather have my reputation ruined because I believed God and Amen. it didn't come through than to, have, than to stand before God and say, yeah, I didn't lift those people up. And if you get people that do know the word and they are in hope and they are in faith and you come in there and you bring hope, uh, man, that's going to build them up. It's going to strengthen them. And you're going to see a miracle from God. Amen. I mean, if you've got somebody who has no hope, no faith, maybe in that moment your hope will become the contagious uh, event that they needed to say, you know what, I did hear the Lord. I did hear it preaching one time that talked about God's my healer, that he's my provider. Right. I did hear that. And in that moment they take up hope and faith. Your hope is contagious Amen. and uh, right now I just I don't know what you're going through uh, maybe you're doing okay but I know that there's probably some that are listening or watching and right now I just, the word says this if two or more agree concerning or touching the will of God it shall be done That's right. and we want to encourage you right now and we want to stand in agreement in hope with you right now so no matter what it is that you're facing you know, Jesus came to save. And in that package of saving, in that package of salvation, he brought deliverance, he brought restoration, he brought protection, he brought provision, he brought healing. In other words, if somebody needed saving in any area, when he declared himself as the Savior and God the Father declared him as the Savior in his word, that meant that he was there to save you from whatever area it is you're facing. And so right now we just stand and we just pray with you. Father, I just ask right now that anybody that's listening to this, that they will take on your hope. I just declare and proclaim. I, I, Lord, just let joy come into their heart and their mind right now. Let it rise to new levels. Lord, let them take confidence in you, the God of hope. Let them take confidence in you. Lord, let them take expectation right now. This thing is not going to end the way the bad report said. Okay. It's going to end in God's way, in yeah. God's truth. And I want you right now, use your faith. Take hope. Put on joy no matter what your emotions or your thoughts are telling you. Put on joy. Put on confidence. Expect great and yes. big things from a God that loves you so much because when you hope in Him, He will not disappoint. Right. And Father, we just thank you for that. We agree together with that person who's believing you yes. right now for whatever area of salvation they need. Father, we believe on you that you will save them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, stuff. let's... Let's look at this responsibility and you can see already in just this conversation how responsibility to hope, when we take that responsibility and we're active in that, it helps other people. Mm -hmm. It helps ourselves and it helps the other ones around us. We are called to be the salt and light and the ambassador. So, you know, the first point that we talked about is that putting on hope and having hope, having joy, confidence and expectation it's Christ-like. Yeah. So 1 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, it's very simple. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, according to the commandment of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus, who is our hope. Who is our hope. Christ Jesus, who is our hope. Well, there, right, right there we see that Jesus is hope and hope is Jesus. So let's look at another example in Romans 15, 13. You want to read that? Sure. Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, and that's where 
that kind of speaks to, you know, where you were saying that we didn't feel our, fl- our flesh, our emotions, our feelings, didn't feel like putting on, you know, joy or confidence. Right. You know, I personally, as a first-time mom, I felt, felt like melting to the floor and right. I, you know, a heap of tears and stuff. But I had God. And yes. because I had God, I had hope. And so I chose to turn to him and said, God, you've got to help me here. I need your hope. And it says, he, will, he is the God of hope who will fill you with all joy and peace and believing. And so when I cried out to him, that's when I, he was able to come in. I, I cried out and said, Lord, I need your hope. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he filled me with that hope yes. that, that spoke to me, that spoke to my husband, that spoke to the people around us that spoke yes. into the body of our child. He helped us. Yes. Yeah. And that's, so looking at the first point, we see that Jesus is hope. We see that God is hope. And we know from the full counsel of the word that we are commanded that's right. to be Christ-like, yes. to be like Christ. And Jesus said that I only do what I see the Father do. That's so right. when he put on hope, then he was being like the father there as well. So we have a responsibility to be Christ-like, and Christ was hopeful. Yes. So right there we see, hey, we have a responsibility to be like Jesus, and we have a responsibility to put on hope. Yes. Point number two is that hope is a command. So let's turn to Hebrews uh, chapter 10 and verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23. And it says this, You want to read that? Yeah. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Yep. He doesn't change. So the command is hold fast to the confession of hope. Yep. In other words, hold fast to hope. This is a command. This is not something that's a good idea. This is a command. So our responsibility is commanded. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 13 and verses 4 through through 8. And what I want you to see here is that in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, love is defined. Yes. And this is where it says love is patient, love is kind. And if you go into verse uh, 7, it says this. It says love, continuing with that, love bears all things believes all things, love hopes all things. Yes. In other words, love gets in joy in all things. That's right. Love gets in confidence in all things. Love gets in expectation of God and His promises and His character in all things and endures all things. And then he goes on to say, and when we're in love, it never fails. It never fails. This is why hope doesn't disappoint. And so what we have to understand is if we want to get to the place where we never fail, then we got to get in love. And if we're going to get in love, we must be in hope. It's a commandment. So hope, he says, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. And then he says, look, be in love. This is, you fulfill all the commandments when you're in love. You must love, love. He tells us over and over again, this is the greatest. This is what empowers faith. We must be in love. And love hopes. Yeah. Love hopes. That's who it is. Who yes. love is. So uh, part three of we have a responsibility to hope is that hope is contagious. So let's turn to First Peter and 3, 14, and 15. You want me to read that? Yeah, go right ahead. It says First Peter 3, 14, and 15 says, but even if you should suffer for the sake of righteousness, you are blessed and do not fear their intimidation and do not be troubled, but sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, Yes. yet with gentleness and reverence. I love this verse. Yes. I love this verse because it, 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 it says so much in that verse. It says that you need to be ready to give an account or give a defense for the hope that is within you. So in other words, hope is contagious. In other words, when you put on hope, 
hope preaches. That's right. In other words, when it says that you are to give a defense, well, what are you giving a defense for? You've got somebody there that's saying, why are you so hopeful? Mm -hmm. I remember in the situation in the hospital, we yeah. had people that were looking at us going, how are they, where do they have this hope? And we were able to point them straight to Jesus. Amen. And then they could take hope in yeah. Jesus. Hope is contagious. Your hope preaches to the world. It preaches to other Christians. Your hope preaches. Your joy preaches. Your confidence in the things of God. It preaches. Your expectation on His promises. It preaches. That's right. So let's turn lastly to uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Also some of my favorite verses here. This is one of my first messages was on Romans 12, 1 and 2. That's a good one. Yeah. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So do we understand that if we're going to present our bodies to God, then our spiritual service of worship is to get in hope? That's Isn't right. that our responsibility? Yes. Isn't that our uh, presenting our bodies, presenting our minds, presenting our flesh is to get into hope. So we're talking about we can input hope here. Mm -hmm. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and listen to this, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. As a part of transforming ourselves to the Word of God, we put on hope and we manifest hope. When we do that, faith has something to produce. People see the hope. They see the manifestation of God's promises. They see things working in your life. And all of a sudden, we prove to the people around us that the will of God is good. Amen. It's perfect. And yes. it is, the will of God is able to be accepted. So hope is contagious. When people see you putting on hope, it causes them to see the proof of God's goodness yes. in your life. And they say, I want that too. And so I, I love those verses. They're yeah. great verses. Amen. Well, yeah, and I encourage you, no matter what you've got going on today, don't look to the circumstance. Look to the God of hope. And, you know, we get there will be times when you don't feel like it. But we've seen it. We've experienced it. We've walked in it. That's when you cry out yes. to the God of hope. If yes. you have God as your Lord and Savior today, you have hope. The world will yes. try to cover it up with the junk. But you look to your God of hope and cry out to him and say, Lord, yes. I need you. I don't yes. feel like hoping, but I know I am to hope. And you choose to stand in that hope. You choose to accept that responsibility. You will change your circumstances. Yes. And if you don't have God, that can change right now. right now. You cry out, Lord, we just thank you. We know, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. We accept you as our Savior. Yeah. And we thank you that you are our hope. And we receive you in Jesus' name. And you cry out to him. He is there for you. Yes. That hope will change circumstances. Yes, amen. 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 And if you said that prayer today and uh, you, you accepted Christ for the first time, you made Him your Lord and Savior for the first time, or you're recommitting to Him, send us a note and tell us. We have something for you. We'd like to send it to you. Make sure that you send us a note. Yeah. And if you're listening to this today, and you said, you know what, I wish I could hope like they did. You can That's right. receive Jesus. Rewind this just a couple of minutes. Receive Christ in a prayer today, yes. and you can have that hope for you today. All you need is Jesus. Have a great day. Have a great week. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us on Connection. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for joining Brian and Nicole for this week's broadcast. Connection is all about connecting you more intimately with Jesus, where you can find true joy and really live. Contact us or watch more shows online at connectionshow.org. We love you. Have a great week.